I want to introduce uh, Albert Bertram, who's going to present the financial portion of the report. And then feel free, um, trip me when I go by. Or you can, you know, grab Mark or Jason as well, or Mary Kay. So they're all good resources. And thanks so much. <laughs> What? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, good evening. I'm the last one, so uh, well, I, I got I got a quick presentation. So um, I'm going to present on the finance section of your annual reports that you'll get here in a few moments. Um, I'm just going to go briefly with the layout. There's nothing too detailed. So um, I'll have my contact information at the end, my email address. So if if there's any pressing questions that you don't want to wait to ask tonight, feel free to contact me later at a later date. So uh, I'll just get this started. See if this will work for me. Nope. <laughs> all right. So as everyone else said, thank you for all you do um, for our schools. So uh, here's the talking points. There should be some handouts somewhere if, if anyone needs one. Um, I'm going to talk about the annual report briefly, and I uh, list my sources for you, and then uh, we're considering doing a, well, we're going to do a survey in the next month or so, so I'm going to briefly talk about that, and then if we don't have any questions, we'll get the annual reports out to everyone and uh, get on our way, so go ahead, Pat. Thanks. So uh, this is page one, the top. Um, it, it just has, you know, it's pretty familiar to what was last year. I just expanded a little bit what we had last year. So up here is your general fund, your, you know, your revenues, expenditures. This is pretty, this is one of the more important sections on the entire thing. So um, I just provided more detail on the statement of net position and the balance sheet items down here. I don't think that was in there last year. So basically I'm just trying to get you guys as board members and um, not, I'm, I'm the finance person for the office, but I have to communicate this to the renewal team. So I try to get as much information on here as possible. So in the past, you guys at, at board trainings uh, asked for more information. So I try to put more information on there. So as you're looking at this, if you need anything further that's not on here, feel free to tell me and I'll, I'll add it. So um, with that, this is pretty simple. Go ahead, Pat. Um, the next part is just the, uh, the debt section, pretty much. This is at the bottom of page one. That's why I put section two of page one. So uh, you got your notes payable, your, which is usually your state aid notes um, for the year, just as a reference to match up against the records that I have. So, um, and, it, and all this comes right from the audit. So that's, that's uh, pretty clear. Um, the capital operating leases. So all this stuff is pretty standard. So if there's any issues with anything, feel free to let me know and we'll, we'll uh, figure it out. Um, at the bottom, I, uh, I have the square footage. So the square footage is based on the square footage at the time of the audit year. So if you've added a building subsequently, that's not going to be reflected in this. So that's something to consider as well. Go ahead, Pat. Um, this section is just uh, a percentage, percentage section, and it, it's just there to help compare from year to year revenues, expenditures, and different line items. Um, it may not be exactly similar to this or you know some of the schools uh i think all the nha schools add special education as a separate line item under instruction i i segmented the same way your auditor did so um should be pretty simple self-explanatory go ahead pat <clears throat> so the top of this is just the bottom of the previous page it was too long for one page so it's just the totals your total fund balance your beginning and your ending fund balance um and then underneath that i just have a little bit of budgetary comparisons that's the same as last year so um, if your question didn't get answered last year, ask it this year and we'll answer it this year. Um, and then there's just some, some more comparisons. I, th I think those are last year's too. Go ahead, Pat. Um, last year, this, this section was in a different part of the report. So I, I moved into my, my section where I made it last year, but it was in a different part. So I basically put it in, in with my, my stuff. So if you have any questions on your enrollment data, you can put those to me as well. Um, this is a chart. This information is not from the audit. It is from CEPI. Now, the only, the only difference is, is uh, the fall 2013 is actually the number that you submitted to me or that I received. I don't know if you submitted it to me, but uh, via Epicenter. So when I got that, that DS4061, I, I just took that number. Um, so that's what that is. So if you have any questions on your enrollment, they can come to me. Go ahead, Pat. This is free and reduced lunch. This is also from CEPI. I, didn't, I, I don't get this via Epicenter, so the newest date I had was fall 2012. 
So, and then, and then I didn't say it's on last one, but there's a percentage change, so that's just pretty standard too. Go ahead, Pat. Thanks. Um, this was not in there last year. I did. I do this in my in my review every year, but I didn't put it in there last year because I'm a numbers person. So I didn't I didn't put the written portion in there. This year I added it. So I, I tried to reference your page numbers of the audit to make your review faster. So hopefully someone gets value out of it because uh, I added it in this year. So go ahead, Pat. Um, these are my sources. So there's the CEPI website. It's pretty easy to find at michigan.gov. And then the audits come from that website. So go ahead, Pat. Okay. So that's the audit review. Is there, if there's any questions on that, it's pretty similar to last year. Okay. All right. So um, this is the other part of my uh, presentation. It's just going to talk about that survey I mentioned briefly. So what is the purpose of an audit? So as many of us know, there's a big time delay from when the fiscal year ends to when we actually, well, we, the, char the, the, the charter school officers receive the audit. So it's, I'm going to show that on a diagram in a second. But um, what is the purpose of an audit? The purpose of an audit is to enhance the degree of confidence that intended users can place in the financial statements. So the audit is to, you know, let the board members know that the, the information they're receiving all year is actually the right information, that, it, that they can make decisions off that and be confident in their decisions. So go ahead, Pat. You're going to have to push the button. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, so the next question is, is, is the audit information relevant from a board member's perspective? Can they make informed decisions off it, or is, there, is the time delay a little too much? You know, I, I define relevance out of my accounting book you know, that I read all the time. Uh, accounting information must be capable of making a difference in a decision. So that's what I said. Can the, the audit actually help you make a decision? Go ahead, Pat. So the relevance also says that it needs to have predictive value, confirmatory, confirmatory value, or both. So predictive value, for those of us who don't read accounting books, is uh, it has the value as an input in a predictive process used to form expectations about the future. So can your audited information, it, it, it helps you verify as we're going to, as when he pushes the button next, but can it help you be more of a predictive factor for your budgets and everything? Can you use it or is it too time delayed? So that's what, that's what I'm talking about here. So confirmatory value is just the audit itself verifying the numbers. So that the audit should be able to do both. So this timeline, shows the current timeline of everything. So as I said earlier, the fiscal year end is June 30th, and our office doesn't have the epicenter uh, due date until November 15th, and that's also the state's, state's deadline. We just matched their deadline. So that's 138 total days, and then I put the last date aid payment for that fiscal year is received in August, and the first for the next fiscal year is received in October. Go ahead, Pat. You gotta put, yep, okay. So this timeline is uh, one of the ideal timelines that, we, that we're going to uh, send a survey to you about. So this graph, is, this uh, diagram, is pretty important um, to us at the Charter School Office. So if you notice up in the top right-hand corner, I don't know if you can see on those tiny little boxes I gave you in the, in the printouts or from way in the back, but it says non-single audit schools. So this is kind of the timeline that we would hope to have the, uh, the this is a, I won't say hope, but it's a, a rough guesstimate based on our research, what we hope the schools could um, try to strive for as far as an audit deadline. Push one more time, please. So on the bottom is the single audit schools, and uh, basically this is us understanding that if you're having a single audit done, you're going to need more time for your audit process. And uh, I've, I've read audit books and all this stuff, and I know that auditors are very touchy about this type of, type of topic of um, speeding up their work. And, and, and I want their work to be accurate, and that's not what I'm, I'm not trying to push auditors. I'm trying to see if we can somehow work together to improve the timeline. So that's what this is all about. So what happens next? Um, so somewhere around here, Pat Victor, well, he's been, he's been all over this place, but uh, he, has a, he has a document that has a list of your financial contact. And uh, I just wanted him, he'll probably verify that. He probably has already verified that with everyone in this room already. But uh, if, if uh, we just want to make sure we have the right financial contact, because when, this sends, when we send this out, it's not going to go to the board members. It's probably going to have to go to the financial contact at the school. So I probably will CC a board member. Um, 
but we'll but I, I have to talk to Mickey about all this and you know figure out how exactly we're gonna do it so that's the first thing um, second is prior to taking the survey uh, we're asking that the financial person at each school talk to their EMO board members you know their auditor especially to try to you know how feasible is this so we're not trying to force this on you we're trying to ask if it's feasible so um, uh, the third bullet, timetables are not expected to be effective this year and auditors need time for planning so be sure to stress that first thing up front with your auditor that you're not going to uh, expect this to happen this year. We want to see if it's possible in the future just, just to have information for the charter school office and for the, uh, for the board members and everyone, you know, any, the public, you know, the audit should, should be a little more relevant than it is. Um, so we'll send out the email will be done electronically it should have approximately 10 questions and i assume it will take around five minutes it's going to be a quick quick survey on audits and uh yeah any questions on that go ahead Beth. no questions go ahead what is a, a single audit versus a mass single okay good question um a single audit is uh certain schools if they get Five, over five hundred thousand dollars from the federal government they're required to have a separate it's called a single audit it's basically a more extensive audit of that money by you know because it's a fed federal money so it's it's more extensive it takes longer so that's that's in a nutshell that's what that is good question anyone else go ahead okay, your percentage if you, like say for instance your, your school was you know doing as well as far as uh, being in the black or whatever, mm -hmm. but is there a certain percentage or a certain uh, area that you you have to look at to uh, see whether that school should have uh, uh, allocated more money to different areas? So Are you talking about like can be for like re the renewal process? You mean yeah? So uh, when when we when we meet as a renewal team, we we discuss like everything. So when when I bring my financial stuff, I bring all these percentages and stuff, and and I look at you know is their fund balance trending upwards? How is their enrollment been? We, we look at a ton of factors. We look at all the academic stuff, and you know we kind of we we. I I last time we had a school up, I think I took like an hour to talk about. I went the full eight years and talks about everything so we look at it pretty extensively so i don't, don't be worried about one percentage and it's and we usually like to see the fund balance trending upwardly and we like to see around the 10 percent of fund fund balance over revenue but it's not like a requirement it's not in your charter contract so we're pretty you know we're pretty it's not a requirement so we just if you're in deficit that's when there's that's when there's issues you know and, and we take your management agreements into consideration and you know all that stuff academic performance is the primary the primary measure though obviously so does that answer your question uh, yeah. okay good was there another hand back there no any more questions or pat victor's gonna start running around go ahead sorry this question is to me to uh, lay people, some very different skills, some in the academic area, some in the uh, uh, accounting numbers area. Mm -hmm. For the most part, I think most of them don't have uh, special skill sets in those areas. Mm -hmm. But they are held responsible as board members for making really uh, critical decisions that deal with budget, that deal with academia, analysis of the team, doctrine, and so forth. And my question is, what uh, training plans and events will they give to any to try to ensure that the body of lay people who assemble as a board to make board decisions have a fairly solid foundation on which to examine the uh, financial documents, the first of right kind of information, the examine the achievement data, interpretation, the know, so that you know you've got good cohesive board members working in ways collaboratively, as opposed to this body showing up mm -hmm. not being uh, meaningfully engaged. Great question. Um, I I know I've done at least two or three trainings myself, and uh, if there's any of this terminology that's on this actual report, 
Um, so, that, so for example, the non-spendable classification, if any of that kind of stuff you don't know, it's actually right in your audit. The auditors are required to put the definitions of things in the audit. So um, I, I've given presentations on that before. I think we have videos on our website on it. We have, and we have a lot of resources. We do do trainings. Um, and we're also, if, if you feel like you need a training in a specific topic via academics, finance, whatever, if you just let us know, we're pretty receptive to that and we'll, we'll, we'll bring it to you. So that's a great question. Anything else? Perfect. Mickey, you got something else? Um, number one, on the training, if we could get <laughs> questions. Pat Victor will bring your uh, reports around. So if you have any questions for me, feel free to grab me or come talk to me or whatever. Um, thanks for coming, everyone, and drive safe. <laughs>